Holy smokers, that ain't no jokers. My name is Jamila Fruit Fruit Fruit. I hate politics. I only buy unprofitable companies that have massive share pollution. I sell my stupid Discord for a massive rip off price because I promise you instant wealth when in reality he 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 you gotta live below your me he he he's and match your tax advantage account Jeremy and buy that sexy VTT Loser! Welcome back to Strongman Personal Finance. I am Christopher Bell, certified public accountant, long-term boglehead investor, Jeremy, who's that? Author of the book, Stop Being a Broke Loser, and hater of Jeremy LeFoufou. Now, you guys think I harp on him a lot. And it's true, I do, because he exemplifies how disgusting YouTube personal finance is. The whole purpose of YouTube personal finance is these clowns come on and they promise you, you can get rich really, really quick. All you gotta do is sign up for their Discord and pay for their courses and buy unprofitable speculative stocks. And if you do that, you're gonna 10x, you're gonna be wealthy before you know it. And it's a freaking lie and it's disgusting. And Jeremy, if you're watching this, you are screwing over thousands, if not tens of thousands, of young and impressionable investors with your disgusting stock picks, okay? You don't know what you're doing. You are a gambling degenerate. You got lucky with Tesla, which we all know was a speculative investment. I made a video about it, showing it that you bought it simply for speculation. But now you're a genius! And now you just think you're the best things in sliced bread. Well, I'm about to slice your business to pieces. Just give me time, buddy. Because you must repent and join the Boglehead army. And if you don't, you're gonna regret it. <laughs> it's not a death threat, okay? I'm just saying you're being freaking scummy. Anyway, we're gonna look at what a company, or what a uh, Jeremy, what a company, <laughs> one of Jeremy's most recent picks. The Honest Company it was founded by Jessica Alba. And I honestly think he picked this company because Jessica Alba's hot. Anyway, let's go look and see what price Jeremy said he would buy this stock at. And then let's see what the price is now. <laughs> I'm interested in being a buyer. I need this stock at $14 or under, okay? Fourteen dollars or under, and it has my attention, and I'm I would likely buy it if it's under fourteen. Okay, I would I would you know be willing to be a long term shareholder. Hmm. So Jeremy says that you should buy this stock, or at least he's going to. But basically, if you watch his channel and he says he's going to do something, what do you think his freaking fans do? They go ahead and follow him. Okay, because he's such a genius. And they respect him. So, he said he would buy in, which means a lot of his fans probably bought in, at $14 or below. What is it trading at now? About $10.60. Good job there, Jeremy. Hmm. And the funny thing is, I understand that short-term fluctuations are meaningless. But the problem with... The Honest Company, it's not even profitable. Not in the slightest. Neither on the accrual basis of accounting. Do you know what that is, Jeremy? <laughs> or the cash basis of accounting. It's unprofitable trash, okay? How did you find a buy point? What is your method to valuate stocks? Do you just project revenue in the future and then guess a price to sales multiple? Is that all you do? Come on, dude. It's all about the cash flows. It's all about value. La foo -foo. Now, let's go look at their website, The Honest Company, which I don't hate the company. I hate the freaking stock. 
I don't hate Jessica Alba. I hate the Jessica Alba stock. Let's go look at their website and see what they sell. And then let's go look at the financials. Because I know you little foo-foo fans don't believe me. You think I'm just full of crap. I'm just making all this stuff up. Yeah, Jeremy, he's so amazing. Active management, they, that, that always beats index funds. Yeah, indexing is boring. Even though it outperforms over long periods of time and is tax efficient. Uh, let's go look. All right. We are on the Honest Company website. And we have Jessica Alba here. Ooh. <laughs> I swear, I think Jeremy bought this stock because Jessica's hot. Seriously, I really think that's part of the reason. But I don't know. Maybe that's maybe there's another reason. Maybe he just likes unprofitable companies. Maybe that's it. I don't know. Anyway, this is the Honest Company. So they basically sell an assortment of different things. You got diapers. I don't know a thousand different things of diapers. I guess I could buy from here if it's a good deal. Baby crap. You know. You know, it's, okay, it's a bunch of cool stuff. You got, like, Prince tr ba potty training. Interesting. Uh, Mama Care, Baby Red Shirt. Okay, beauty stuff for women, I guess for men, too. I guess for LeFoufou, he probably uses that. Bath and body, cleaning stuff, gifts. I mean, there, there's a decent amount of stuff here. Here's my problem with this company. I don't hate Jessica Alba. I don't hate people that, you know, oh, the Honest Company, you know, they're very, uh, you know, I think they don't do animal cruelty. I, I talked to my wife about it. I, they don't do animal cruelty. You know, they're, you know, they're organic, stuff like that. But at the end of the day, the average consumer, I think, is most worried about price. Okay? Not that they're liberal and amazing. This company is a very niche company. It's mostly for rich, spoiled, freaking liberals that want to pretend like they are good people because they buy organic and cruelty-free stuff. Even though they buy crap from China all the time and there's, you know, bad things that happen there. But don't worry about that. So, that's my thoughts. I mean, okay, there's, it, it's a nice, you know, one-stop shop for, you know, mothers with babies, obviously. And I guess you can just buy a bunch of stuff here. But you can get all the same stuff for Walmart, you know, or Target even, or anything. What is so special about this company? How is this company going to be able to build a, a solid moat? that protects it from being, you know, overwhelmed with competition. Because in my personal opinion, the way I am, I'm a frugal person. I would not buy from this website because I can go to Walmart and get stuff way, 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 way cheaper. And that allows me to save money to do other things besides trying to, you know, flex and be amazing. But at the end of the day, you have to look at the fundamentals. Even if you don't like the company or if I don't like the company, I mean, I'm not against it, but I wouldn't buy stuff from here. You have to go look at the fundamentals because there's always that little liberal crowd that's going to shop here. And that's great. Whatever. Congratulations, Jessica. But we need to go look at the financials to see on a fundamental basis. And we're talking about actual fundamentals, not what alpha status stocks calls fundamentals. Oh, I'm going to read some slides that I don't even understand. We'll go look at the financial statements, okay? And then we'll conclude the video. Let's go. All right. So we're looking at the 10Q, the most recent quarterly statement from the Honest Company. So, an overview, the Honest Company, Honest, and together with its consolidated subsidiaries, the company we, we, us, and our, is a digitally native, mission-driven brand focused on leading the clean lifestyle movement. Is that a thing? What is this, like, a, in a small part of California? Creating a community for conscious consumers. Uh, you know, financially conscious? I don't think so. And seeking to dis in seeking to disrupt uh, disrupt multiple consumer product categories. There's your key word right there. If they say disrupt, you got to buy the stock. Wow. Now, let's see how they're different than everybody else. Our commitment to our core values. I didn't see that here in the in the 10Q, but whatever. Passionate innovation, innovation, disruption, innovation. And engaging our community have differentiated and elevated our brand and products. I completely disagree, okay? There's a thousand competitors for freaking the crap that they sell. Let's see what they sell. Hmm. Our three categories are diapers and wipes, skin and personal care, and household and wellness. Wow. There's no competitors in those categories, ladies and gentlemen. Hmm. And on top of that, they're not making a profit. Interesting. 
Our omni-channel approach seeks to meet consumers however they want to shop, balancing deep consumer connection. Yeah, I'm so deeply connected. With broad convenience and accessibility. All I see is freaking buzzwords, okay? Since our launch, we have built a well-integrated omni-channel presence by expanding our retail accessibility across digital and retail channels, including the launch of strategic partnerships with Costco, Target, and Amazon. <gasps> what about my Wally world? Sick! Anyway, interesting. So, okay, looks like they have their online sales, and then they have partnerships with Costco, Target, and Amazon. Now let's go look at the financials. Let's see if they're profitable. Let's see how much money we can make as investors and owners of this company. Oh, dude, it doesn't matter. Profits! Condensed consolidated financial statements. You see here, Jeremy? These aren't balance sheets, okay? These are financial statements. The balance sheet is one of the financial statements. Jesus. So let's go look at the balance sheet. Did the freaking links not work? <sighs> All right, so here's the balance sheet. Assets. So when you look at the balance sheet, the couple things you can look at, debt to equity ratio, trends in the debt to equity ratio, uh, current ratio, quick ratio. Basically, you want to see trends in debt and you want to see if the company's able to pay its bills in the near term. If you want to see if they're able to pay their bills in the short term, you want to look at total current assets, which is $215 million, divided by total current liabilities, $51 million. So yes, as long as that's over one, which is, this is five, or well, roughly, or four, they're going to be able to pay their bills, okay? That's not bad. Now, long-term liabilities, let's see, hmm, long-term, they have some lease financing obligations and other long-term liabilities. So honestly, they're really not increasing their debt that much. That's fine, but they're probably doing that because of, because <laughs> they're issuing stock and share dilution. That's how they fund their operations. Now, you want to go down and look at stockholders' equity because this shows you the different capital structure, preferred stock, common stock, how they raise their money, how many shares they have issued, and how many shares they can potentially issue in the future. So, looking at common stock, because that's what you're going to be buying as an investor. Par value, don't worry about that. There's a billion shares authorized as of June 30th, 2021. So they can issue up to a billion shares total. As of right now, they have issued an outstanding, which means they're actually out there trading, 90 million shares. So they can 10x the number of shares that they can issue to the public in order to raise money, which would dilute you, the current shareholder. You want to look at that, all right? Accumulated deficit. What does that mean? That is bad. That means they've been having tons of losses and they've been stacking up on each other. So if you compare this right column, which is the six months ended December 31st, 2020, and you compare that to the six months ended June 30th, 2021, you can see the accumulated deficit has increased from $352 million to $377 million. So they have lost, on the accrual basis of accounting since inception, $377 million. And over the last, what, six months, they've lost $20 million, something like that, $25 million. Jesus Christ. Horrible. Then we can go look at the statement of uh, statements of comprehensive income income statement. Now, the important thing in here is you want to at least make sure they have a decent gross profit compared to competitors in the industry, and you want to see that make sure that's not changing too much. Your gross profit is your revenue minus your cost of sales. You can look at their operating income, which is negative, and you can look at their net income, which is their bottom line profit. So. As of the three months ended June 30th, 2021, they lost $20 million. $20 million freaking dollars, okay? Earnings per share, negative 0.17. So if you buy one share of stock, you have had negative earnings of 0.17. 17 cent loss. That's amazing. Great investment right there. Weighted average shares using and computing, uh, use and computing net income. So since... Last year, shares have doubled. Part of that was the IPO. They IPO'd recently. But that trend's going to continue. If they're losing money, they're going to have to either raise debt or, or uh, issue debt, or they're going to have to issue shares to finance their operations. So, let's see. Hmm. Statement of cash flows. So, here's the funny thing. For the six months ended June 30th, 2020, they actually had positive cash flows from operations of $13 million. But in the most recent six months, they've lost $32.6 million. That's a lot of money freaking burned, ladies and gentlemen. They burned 
million freaking dollars over the last six months. That is freaking crazy. Okay. I think if there's what, 9 million shares, 90 million shares outstanding, they've burned 33 cents per shareholder in operating expenditures. Ugh. You want this to be positive. Operating cash flow is cash flow from your operations, what you do. If your business is profitable on the cash basis, you're going to have positive cash flows from operations. And of course, you can look at investing activities. I mean, let's see. They're not really purchasing a lot of equipment. It's mostly like buying short-term investments to, I guess, make some money on their cash. And of course, proceeds from initial public offering, net of underwriting commissions and discounts. They raised $96.5 million from their IPO. Dividends? Why are they paying dividends? <laughs> They're not even profitable. Why are they? Whatever, whatever. This company is freaking garbage, okay? Way too early to be investing in. Why would you risk your financial future on a company that lost $32 million over the last six months, okay? You cannot afford to gamble and speculate on stocks like this, especially because some clown on YouTube told you to. Instead, you should max your tax advantage accounts and buy broadly diversified index funds. In my Roth IRA, I have the VT ETF, the Vanguard Total World Index ETF. And that's all you need. It's a one-stop shop, at least for me, because I own every company in the world, probably including this one, sadly, at market cap weights. And I don't pay taxes because it's in my IRA. That's how you build wealth. Not by buying a company that burns massive amounts of money and really has no moat. So, Jeremy, I'd love to have you make a response and tell me your thoughts. How amazing this brand is. Just a girl was hot! <sighs> anyway, that's it. Like, subscribe. Tell your friends about me. Don't buy this stock unless you want to speculate because Jeremy told you to. And y'all have a wonderful day. Choo!